is an error handling like we can use either try catch block or we can use oh, if there is any file not found exception okay let's look at guys exception is an event it is an event which occurs which occurs which occurs during the execution of the flow let's say I have some small class here and I have main method in this I'm writing some lines of statements okay exception and some line you are doing some uh, let's say let me take in the some line you are trying to do length of the string let's say you want to know what is the size of your name I mean what is the length of your name <laughs> okay and some place you have sc equal to name equal to you have declared the name you just initially you assign null let's assume that here we have declared name name equal to just declared name okay and here let's assume that is static okay I'm directly using a main method that's why I said uh, static so some other place you are doing that name dot length you're trying to fetch name dot length you are, you are using the method called name dot length now you have 10 statements here this is the statement of seventh one and there are other three statements here there are the three statements here now the flow will start executing from here and when it comes to seventh what is the value of your name what is the value of name here what is the value of the name the line number seven what is the value of your name I have just declared the name here I'm trying to make use of it here Anisha what is the value of the name What is the value of the name? Okay. You just declare the name. You didn't assign any value. So default value is null. Right? Null dot length. Can you access a method in the null? Can you access a method? Can you execute a method? Or can you call a method on the null values? No it is null pointer exception null pointer exception so what it is it is an event what it did as soon as it reached line number seven as soon as it reached line number seven it found something wired which is which is not able to proceed and saying that no 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 i cannot finish this so because of this problem no no i cannot execute the rest of the lines i'm coming out i'm coming out from the execution this is called an exception this is called an exception exception is an event which occurs the during execution of our flow execution of your program during the execution of the program and interrupts your flow interrupts your flow it means it stop your flow because of some problem and it will come out from the execution that is called an exception that is called an exception what is an exception exception is an event which occurs at the, during the execution of the a program and if it finds anything wrong and it will create exception object we'll talk more about what is exception object and how to handle exception we'll talk more about it in the coming classes which will stop the execution it will come out from the execution and it will not execute the rest of the lines like line number 8 9 10 and so on it will not execute because it from the error at line number 7 it from some exception at the line number 7 it will come out it came out okay so there are different type of exceptions guys one is checked exceptions you can say compile time exceptions other one is unchecked exceptions you can say it's called runtime exceptions there is other one called error there is other one called error so the exceptions are you can handle exceptions are you can handle with your code changes or with some something you can handle but errors cannot handle errors cannot handle errors are like your server is crashed your memory is out of memory your memory is full is broken right so these kind of things you cannot handle you cannot handle so some hardware failures some network failures you cannot handle them right so but 
exceptions you can handle exceptions we can handle let's see as I said before so these exceptions and the collections we will see from the documentation why we will see from the documentation because you guys when you're going through this document you should be aware what I'm explaining you should you should recollect what I'm explaining so that's why I'm taking you guys through this Java T point uh, uh, the website let's go to your Java and let's go to exceptions that is at the end I think exceptions handling go here and I'll be taking you through uh, I mean uh, it's uh, if you call chapter or if you call uh, 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 line by line here I'll, I'll I'll be taking you guys through line by line I'll be explaining here when you're going through this uh, the same exceptions you should recollect what I have explained okay so as I said the exception handling is uh, one of the powerful mechanism to handle the runtime exceptions so that normal flow of application can be maintained okay what is exception it's you know abnormal condition in Java exception is even that disturbs the normal flow of the program it is it is an object which is thrown at runtime so that's what I was telling exception object it will create the exception object it will just throw and it will come out okay so let's look at here what is exception handling is nothing but or what are the object is thrown at level of uh, when the exception occurred at when the uh, when the exception occurred it has it, it will create one object called exception object you are handling that exception object is nothing but exception handling if you look at here line number seven it is created null pointer exception object okay after creating a null pointer exception it will throw out it will throw out and it will that object right if you are handling that object by using try class we'll see that very detailedly if you are handling that object that is called exception handling exception handling let's look at guys with a simple example then that will make you or you know, very much clear is everyone able to see my screen is everyone able to see my screen yes sir yep let me create one more package com dot vira dot exception <coughs> exception and my name is exception without exception okay I'm going to write a class without exception handling without exception handling demo I need a main method here just finish just remove this I have declare so, I am taking static guys because I want access directly static string name equal name I'm going inside of this it's out main because I, I'm writing some line number of lines of code so I want to show you that main 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 so one two three after three lines here here name length here I'm trying to find the name length name dot length name dot length at the compile time no issue at the compile time no issue okay so I'll talk more about what is the compile time what is the runtime so don't not to worry now now I'm going to execute this program right click run as and you can take like that look at guys here look at guys here you have something called main main one main two main three then null point exception 
where it is occurred line number 15 line number 15 at the line number 15 you see there is some problem what is that problem you are trying to access a null value I mean you are trying to execute some method on the null value which is not possible right so next two lines are not executed next two lines are not executed one second guys one second please be Okay, sorry guys. Look at here in this exceptions occurred at the line number 15 and line number 19 and 20 is not executed. I mean line number 16 also will not execute because if we have that. Okay, so let me put it here as well to make you very much clear. Okay, so after the exception occurred, none of the line is executed. Why? Because at the line number 15, it found some issue, it created exception object. If you look at this console this is nothing but a null pointer this is nothing but a class okay and it's created object null pointer exception is nothing but a class It's created an object and it is thrown and it is thrown and it's thrown to compiler I mean it's thrown to JVM and it came out that is the reason the rest of the lines are not executed that's the reason the rest of lines are not executed right so that object right the null, null object if you are handling that null object that is called exception handling so we'll talk more about it later let's see you know uh, our uh, uh, continuation here so the same the uh, if you are if you handle that so you can continue the lines so if you're not handled it will be stopped there so let's look at what is exception handling exception handling is a mechanism to handle the runtime error such as class not found io sql remote Null pointer there are some other exceptions as well we'll see all the exceptions advantage of the exception handling the core advantage of the exception handling is to maintain the normal flow of application even though some issue occurred okay fine you bypass that and go and execute something else that is called exception handling exception normally disturbs the normal flow of the application that is why we use exception handling let's take the same example which I have explained here of the line number fifth exceptions occurred suppose there are 10 statements in the program that occurs that line the rest of the code will not be executed if if you are not handling the exception right so the statement 6 to 10 will not be executed 6 to 10 will not be executed until unless you handle it if we perform the exception handling the rest of the code also will be executed how it is let's look at guys here how it is uh, before uh, to see how it is let's try to understand the hierarchy hierarchy of your exceptions the hierarchy of the exception is <laughs> the very top level class as I said before the top level class is object class whatever you write in your Java by default they are child of object class right then there is something called throwable there is something called throwable and there are two classes not only two there are other classes as well there are two classes who uh, see the throwable is not only throwable from the object there are so many classes whatever you write in the java is a child of your object and there are two uh, exception and error from the throwable class this exception has two type of exceptions one is a runtime exception runtime exception whatever is directly under exception class are called Compile time exception. Whatever is there under directly in the exception class, those are called compile time exception. Whatever there under the runtime exception, those are called runtime exception class. Whatever is there under directly in the exception class, those are called compile time exception. Whatever the classes comes under runtime exception are called are called runtime exception. That's why. <laughs> The null pointer also comes under runtime exception. Your arithmetic will comes under arithmetic exception uh, comes under runtime exception. 
number format if you are trying to do you have a string you are trying to convert into number number point number point uh, number format exception right so those are comes under runtime exceptions errors as i said hardware failure or the memory memory issue the virtual box the virtual memory means your jvm the jvm will occupy some memory right that memory if the memory is full or the memory is uh, 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 i mean the hardware is failed that kind of scenarios errors occur errors cannot be handled but exception can be handled exception can be handled understand guys any doubt till here are are we good good to go the next uh, uh, discussion are we good to go the next discussions i didn't receive any response from you guys are you guys able to hear me yes we are okay so very simple let me put the same hierarchy here is very simple you have something called or uh, something called object class then throwable then throwable and you have something called exception from exception you have something called you have something called checked exceptions and run, runtime exceptions so checked exceptions are not separate class guys that's what i'm trying to say whatever classes whatever the exceptions are comes under exception class itself whoever the chains of your exception class they are called compile time exception and whoever the chains of your runtime exception whoever the chains of runtime exception those are called runtime exception class the other one is there is some other one called error anyway the errors are we not handling so errors are something different errors are something different which you not able to handle it okay so let's move for, forward that's what this is what we have discussed there are checked exceptions and unchecked exceptions so we can uh, check the exceptions are at the time of compilation at the time of compilation itself you will find the error okay we have a two stages compiling and running at the time of compile time it finds any error so that is compile time exception so you may not experience that while you are using tools like eclipse so but sometimes you will be experience experiencing something like let's say let's say um i'm trying to access display what it is telling the method display is undefined for a type of i didn't define but i'm trying to access it's a compile time exception i didn't define but i'm trying to access it it's undefined right so this kind of things in the, when you're using tools you may not experienced you may not experience compile time error you may not experience compile time error or compile time exceptions because at the time of the compilation we will be not doing anything here it will uh, by default it will show that it will not throw anything but at the run time when you run it right click and run at the run time it shows it clearly shows that okay this is what the problem at the compile time it is able to identify this is the problem that is called compile time exception it is not able to identify at the time of compilation it is able to identify only at the run time those are called run time exceptions those are called run time exceptions you can look at guys here a run time exceptions are are unchecked exceptions the class that extends the run time exception are known as unchecked exceptions whatever the classes here look at here whatever the classes comes under run time exception classes those are called run time exceptions <laughs> arithmetic null pointer array index number format these are all comes under runtime exceptions unchecked exceptions are not checked at the compile time rather than they checked at the runtime because they cannot identify your compiler is not that much smart enough to identify okay name does not have the value let's go ahead and tell that name don't have the value you cannot access the length method our example was i have a name here and i'm trying to access the length on this your compiler is not that much smart enough 
identifying that okay he didn't assign any value in the name but he is trying to access the length if compiler is not that much smart enough to identify your name does not have any value you cannot access the length it it cannot tell that it's not able to identify at the time of compilation so that's why it is called it is getting able to check at the time of the runtime so that's why it's called runtime exception okay so anyway errors as you know that which is not irrecoverable irrecoverable irrecover means you cannot recover it you cannot handle it memory virtual machine crashes assertions hardware failures some this kind of errors okay common scenarios where will execute the where will expect the errors or where will expect the exceptions like you are dividing by zero arithmetic exception you have a number you are dividing by zero which is arithmetic exception null value you are trying to find the length just now we have seen null value you are finding trying you find trying to find the length null point exception you have string something like abc you are trying to convert into integer number format exception you have array of five values but you are trying to check the six or or more than that 10th value which is array index out of bound exception array index out of bound exception which is not there in that bound now how to handle the exceptions by using try catch try catch we'll be seeing as part of this exceptions we'll be discussing about try fi catch finally throw throws we'll be discussing about them we'll be seeing this these things okay so now let's the same scenario what we have seen okay let me explain i don't need to uh, 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 i don't need that so let me explain from here okay now let's see the same case the same case where i will use the handling exception handling so before getting into exception handling how to write a code you need to try to understand there is something called try catch there is something called try catch try catch what is a try catch what is a try catch try is a block of a code try is a block you will keep some statements under this block you are trying to execute the code what try means trying to execute the code if something goes wrong here you are suspecting something will go wrong here and you are catching them you are not leaving alone you are not leaving to a compiler or leaving to a jvm you are catching it catch what type of exception it is what type of exception it is and you are trying to perform something else you are trying to perform something else in the catch block this is called try and catch this is called try catch try something here try something here if something goes wrong and catch it if something goes wrong catch it here and execute don't stop the flow you just go ahead and execute that is called try catch blocks the contract between the try and catch is the contract between the try and catch is if you are writing a try if you are writing a try guys what are the, what type of code will keep where you are suspecting there may be a chance i may get a problem those statements will keep in a monitoring area the monitoring area is nothing but your try the monitoring area is nothing but a try okay the contract between the try and catch is if you are writing a try you have to write either catch either catch or finally finally at least try a catch or finally what is finally okay ravi we understand try we understand a catch then what is a finally finally is a block of statements finally is a block of statements which will always execute which always execute what does it mean always execute let's assume that i have written some code here your try will execute always your try always will execute if some error comes then no need to go and execute here if something goes wrong then no need to go and execute here if your try is smooth no problem 
in the try then your catch will not execute your catch will not execute it means your catch is occurs or executes when there is a problem in the try when there is a problem in the try then only catch will execute but there is something called finally there is something called finally there is something called finally this finally will execute always irrespective of exception occurred or not your finally will execute always the finally come directly jump from here to finally or it can come from here as well if error is not occurred come from okay finally is uh, try done go to finally try is completed go to finally exception occurred fine you execute the exception statements then go to finally finally the name itself is saying that finally always executes you finally always executes you finally will always execute that's why that's why the contract is if you are writing a try if you are writing a try you should write a catch if you are writing a try you should write a catch or you should write a finally block either you need to write a try a catch or either you need to write a finally sir can i have a multiple catches yes you can go ahead and have any number of catches but there is a small there is a small contract over there there is a small contract what is that uh guys are you guys able to follow because i know for few guys it is a new and few guys it's already aware are you guys able to follow sai teja nikesh rakesh aparna masood harika anisha don't say it okay because behalf of because of uh, you know but sake of me try to understand okay if you really not understand let me know i'll explain i'll put in different way anisha masood sai teja nikesh are you guys able to follow yeah no, i'm able to follow sai teja uh, nikesh mira can you explain finally again yeah i'll explain finally again okay so any other doubts guys sai teja nikesh are you guys are there in front of the system maybe i'm not hearing them fine finally is a block of statements finally is a block of statements which will execute always which will execute always always means your catch block will execute if you have a error in a try your catch will execute if it ever there is some problem in the try then only catch will execute catch block okay if there is no problem at all in the uh, try then it will go directly and continue continue if we have something finally if you have something called finally you are making sure you are telling to your jvm you always execute these statements irrespective of error occur error not occur irrespective of that you always execute finally the code okay so you are trying to say that no no i don't worry about whether exceptions came or not but my finally has to be execute always so that kind of scenarios you go with the finally you'll go with the finally you understand right anisha now the catch will occur only when the problem comes your catch will occur when the only problem comes but i don't want that i want something the whether problem is there or not here it always has to execute that one will keep in a finally thing so like closing the resources closing the resources the main purpose of finally is closing the resources what is the closing resources let's assume that guys you open the file here you open the file you open the file and try to start doing some operations if some problem occurred the whatever you have open the file connection that has to be closed right if error occurred 
it will not get closed. Here it will execute something else. Okay. If error is not occurred, anyway, you will not be closing a try. <laughs> so, when open any sources, not only file, you have opened the connection. You have opened something called connection. You have opened something called connection here. And you have done, done some DB operations. While doing DB operations, some error occurred. You will go to cache and you will execute here. But someone has to be close the DB connection. We will close in the final class. So closing the resources, terminating the resources, we will always do in the final leap. <laughs> because the final leap always executes. Respect of error come or not, the final leap will always execute. Clear, Anisha? Anisha, is that clear? Uh, yes, Mira, yeah. Thank you. Okay, so as I said, multiple catches. One try can have multiple catches. Catch one. Catch two. Catch three. You can have multiple. Okay, you can have multiple catches. But the rule is, the rule is, if you have a multiple catches, always make sure that child exception come first. Child exception come first. What is child exception? What is child exception? If you guys remember in the hierarchy, in the if you guys remember in the hierarchy, <coughs> arithmetic exception, null point exception, or run uh, or uh, five, uh, array index of order bound exception or number format exception, these are all child of runtime exception correct now now if you keep the first catch itself exception the parent class top level parent class exception and here null here number and here file not found let's say now your exception can handle the child class exception your exception can handle child exceptions because it's a parent class, he can handle any type of exception. Yes or no, guys? Because he is a parent, he can handle null exception, he can handle uh, number format, he can handle arithmetic, he can handle file not found, he can handle anything because your exception is the top level class. <laughs> when it is able to, when it is able to solve by your parent, when the problem is able to solve by parent, it will not, it never reaches to child. It never reaches to child, correct? When a pre, your, let's assume that there is a you have declared the parent in the first level and second level and all the childs are there. So you, because he is our parent, because he is our parent, that's why he is able to handle any type of things, right? That's why he is able to handle any type of things. He will never allow to, or he will never lo, uh, miss. He never missed to handle by the child, right? He never missed to handle by the child. That's why we'll call him as a parent, right? Let's take our example, real-time example, our, our parents. Some people are throwing some stones. And our parent came in the first phase. Will our parent leave them to uh, reach us to child? He's, he will handle all type of problems, hiding his kids or his child in you know, his back, correct? In the same way here, your exception is a parent class. Exception is the parent class. He never allow or miss any problem goes to child. So that's why when you declare the childs in the below, it is wrong. We should not do that. <laughs> it means you are declared the parent already. Then why you need to declare the child? Because anyway, it will not reach here. It will not reach here. Anyway, it will not reach to child because the parent is already handled. There is no point to declaring this. So whenever you are declaring multiple catches, you should make sure that child will come first. First, let's give a chance to a child. If he's not able to handle, just give that. Then you'll go to the parent. <laughs> just give a chance to a child, then you get to a parent. That is a multiple try catch. So we'll talk more. I know that it might be confused for the new guys. I'll explain in the program. You'll, you'll easily understand that. Okay, that's a multiple catches. There is something called nested try. 
I have a try. Can I have again a try catch? Yes, obviously you can have a try catch here. Inside the catch, can I have a inside the catch? Can I have a try? Yes, you can have. Inside the finally, can I have a try catch? Yes, you can have. So no no restriction at all. You can have that. Okay. So let's go back to our document or web page and let's look at here. So this is how the try catch looks. Try some code code. You are expecting who will give who will give an exception. You keep in the try, which is called monitoring area, and then catch. Or either you go with the catch or go with the finally. Try go with the catch or go with the finally. Let's look at guys now. This is without exception handling. So the program which I have written. Right now look at with exception with exception the same program I'm going to show you with exception which exception handling let me close this guys let me do this save it create class with exception handling With exception handling take demo finish it here go here copy the same code because I need to show you the same code right so if I show the different code is wrong I should have a name here Try catch. I'm catching it saying that. So let me show you the exception. So I'm not going to show you the with the parent, I'm just going to show you exception. Now Okay. Uh, <laughs> Let me explain the code, guys. I have in the main method, there are some lines of code is there. Then I have something called try try block where I'm trying to get the length in the try block because I'm expecting some problem may come here. I have kept in the try in the catch in the rest of the code or whatever I want to execute. I have kept in the catch and I have kept something also outside the catch. So to demonstrate so how it will work. Okay, let's go ahead and run this. Let's go ahead and run it. main first main line number 7 line number 9 10 line number 10 line number 11 okay now it came to inside the try inside the try inside the try so it came inside the try and there is a problem occurred line number 14 there is a problem ex occurred line number 14 but it is not stopped right it just continued in the catch block inside the catch then main main and outside the catch also outside the catch also executed and null pointer this is printing because of this line number 20 this is printing because of line number 20 print stack trace print stack trace stack trace means I'll tell you I'll explain that what is a print stack trace I'll tell you okay so it is telling the null point exception at the line number 14 at the line number 14 understand guys when you click on this it will take you to where the problem is so now even though error occurred 
I'm try I'm able to continue even though I, a problem occur I'm able to continue because I have handled it I have handled it <laughs> that's why that's why so what is a print stack trace guys everyone please concentrate here this is a little bit a little bit important thing it is a little bit important thing try to concentrate here it is a little bit important thing <laughs> let's go up so I have a stack so what is a stack guys I think by the time you guys should know what is a stack memory from where we'll call the methods from where we'll call the methods from where we'll call the methods main method then what I'm uh, some other method here some other method here so first a main method will call on top of that if you're calling any other method, that method the method calls this is called stack wherever the problem occurs we're tracing out from there that's why this is tracing out this is called stack trace print stack trace I'm tra tracking this I'm I'm tracing the track what happened it's a clearly explains let's assume that let's assume that let me show you one more you know, differentiate here how it will be tracked that's what I'm trying to say okay how it will track okay because it is not a static so I'll make it is static because I want to direct I don't want to create object so by the time you guys know what is a static I don't think I need to explain one more time so here I don't want call like this I want to call uh, print length I want to call print length method <coughs> I want to call print length method now look at guys here so first keep keep first keep this output so at least not output at least this error copy and keep it somewhere sorry it's not copied oh seems it's not copy oh okay it'll not copy because it is in a VM what is that I'm printing into them but I can prepare it here now paste it here okay now go ahead and execute this <coughs> but now the same error now it is two lines it is printing two lines why two lines it is printing because look at guys here <coughs> look at guys here first stack trace right stack trace the method print length method is getting called from where main method so the first the main method is called the first the main method is called in this class line number 20 look at that whether it's right or wrong the main method is called like the line number 20 <coughs> I mean execution guys it's not exactly line number 20 the the, the print method is, has been getting called inside the main at the line number 20 the print method has been called the print length method has been called at the line number 20 and the cursor is moved to line number 8 right to execute that and the cursor is moved to print length <laughs> then length is 9 that's why a line number 9 that's why it's line number 9 look at here the print length is moved the, the print length method has been called from the main method at the line number 20 then the print length is the print length method is called in the print line print length method line number nine issue occurred line number nine the issue occurred look at guys here line number nine issue occurred. it means what happened internally what happened internally <laughs> because the first main method is called after main print method called if you are calling some other method here that method will be called here if you are calling some other this is the this is a stack okay so who called first main 
then who called print so the problem occurred here so this is called print stack trace this is called tracking your stray your stack so you are trying to understand from where the error occurred from where the error occurred if you want to see one more example to understand more clearly i'm i'm telling it's one i'm i'm telling that is one in this I'll not call this error here. Then I'll call this method here to showing you guys to to showing you how to how the the exception track will happen. Okay. Now look at now look at three lines. Wow. Three lines. Go here and look at. Forget about this. So it is not. So main method called at the line number 23. Which method has been called? Print length method. In the print length method, in the print length method, in the line number 12, print length 1 has been called. Print length 1 has been called. In this method, line number 7, the issue occurred. Let's true check guys whether it's right or wrong. In the print number uh, print length method one the line number seven the issue has been occurred so it is this is called stack trace so how it happen how it happen it happens such a way that you have a stack memory correct you have a stack memory first one method will call second first is the main method main method is called from inside the main method, I have called print length method. And in this print length method, I have called one more print length method. The problem is occurred here. So I'm tracing down. I'm tracing down. This is called print stack trace. <laughs> this is called your tracing your stack. Okay, so that's that, that's why you are seeing that message. That's why you are seeing that message in the in the console. Is everyone is clear? Is everyone is clear about that? That is called exception handling. Okay, so this is what will happen in the try catch. If exception object will be created, exception S go and handle. Exception no, just go and handle the complete. If it is not handle. It will, it will be handled by your JVM. It is handled. You have to handle your code okay, in the try catch block. Multiple catches. Yes, we discussed about just now. We discussed about the multiple catches, arithmetic, array index, and exception. If you look at guys this example, this is very much important. Look at this example. The parent came lost. The parent came in the lost. Why can't it be a very first statement? Why can't it he be a first statement? Okay, if he is the very first statement, you will see one more problem here saying that it will not be reached, it will not be reached to child classes, it will not be reached to child classes. You can try it, so take it as an exercise and try it. Anyway, code is available here, okay, or else I'll show you here only. Wait, I'll show you here only. Wait, okay, now let me execute, compile, and run this. Very successful, it is executed now. This catch block, I'm removing here. I'm keeping in the first line. I'm keeping in the first line because, as I said, a parent can come first. As we says, parent come for come first. So if a parent come first, what will happen? Look at guys here. Exception is already been caught. Already has been. It means it's all, it's not reached. It's already someone has been handled it. It will not reach to you. It will not reach to you. So if it is your tool, it will clearly shows that cannot reach exception. <laughs> cannot reach exception. You guys can try this. Uh, I request you guys to try this. Okay. That's that's an example. Uh, see here, at the time only one exception is occurred. At the time only one catch block is executed. All catch blocks must be ordered from the most 
specific to most general most specific to like a child to parent that's what most specific arithmetic issue put arithmetic first if it's an exception first it will problem so this is what wow really here is already explained if you have a exception first and sales next this will show exception compile time error <laughs> okay nested try clutch box as i told you before you can have a nest try inside the try inside the try inside the catch also you can have a try inside the finally also you can have a try <laughs> no problem at all it will work okay finally block finally block is make sure that will always executes finally blocks make sure that it will always executes finally blocks make sure that it will always executes so exception propagation so i'll talk about the throw and throws keyword later so okay so we will do one thing guys the rest of the things we will discuss in the next class so already 7:40 so i know few people who has to rest to their of the uh, no uh, office so rest of the things we will be discussing in the next class by next class we will be completing we will be completing exceptions okay any doubts till any doubts till now any doubts uh vira that uh, in the program hmm. uh, the last statement right after catch hmm. uh, can you come down uh, so that is actually not put in finally block right but still it is executed correct it is not in the final block it is a part of the your main method right but even the exception occurs um correct so suppose let's say from here you have moved uh, you have from here you were you were you moved uh, suppose let's say you have said new through here you did something now your cursor never come here right it will just your cursor will go to some other place you are throwing right but if you keep finally final make sure such like execute very good question anisha we'll talk about that i'll explain you uh, know in the next class so i'll keep in mind this and i'll explain tomorrow tomorrow means next class will be in monday morning okay thank you vira yeah. so that's it for today guys thank you thanks for your time have a great day thank you sir have a good day happy pongala thank you bye guys